what I think I'll do, I think I'll probably hold on to each individual one if that's okay. Okay. Actually, awesome. Thank you. <laughs> okay. So we'll see if anything comes off of this. If I can't get a clear connection on that, we'll jump all over the place. Cool. And I'll let you know where we're going. Sounds good. All right. So I'm going to give it one sec. Okay, so I have a man who died of a heart attack at like a, um, around middle age or before. But he wasn't like, a, this isn't grandfather or anything along those lines. It's, it's more of like an uncle. Um, the reason why I bring this up is because this man comes through and acknowledges he died like way too early, way before his time. And this was just like that. Could you understand where that could potentially fit? Okay, so the pipe that you've been holding is my mom's brother. His name was Hu Shang and he died of a heart attack while he was playing soccer. That's like the pipe he was smoking the day he died. My uncle went to a soccer game in the valley at some park and dropped dead on the soccer field. The poor guy died in the valley. Like no one should ever die in the valley. Like if you're gonna die, you wanna at least die on this side of the hill. The, what I do wanna mention is he knew from the get-go that this happened, there was no way that there was any getting out of this. There is an acknowledgement that I need to mention of like there being something said about the promptness of the response medically to this event, but there's still an acknowledgement. It's like it wouldn't have mattered had they been there on location, I was going to pass away. My mom loved her brother so much. They were so close. So my mom thought maybe if they were there or if the ambulance had gotten to him sooner, maybe they could have done something because he was only 50 years old. There was nothing anyone could have done. I hope that that gives my mom some sense of peace or closure. Oh my, we've got some ducks. Great, I can hold on to one of them, yeah. Matches your shirt. It sure does, I'm gonna be wearing it now, accessory. <laughs> this is so much fun. I'm so glad. <laughs> I haven't had so much fun since my ex-mother-in-law fell in the well. <laughs> so bad. I love it. All right, let's see. We've got this, this, and this. Okay, I feel like I'm gonna go in a couple different directions. So one is a man that I have to highlight that we have to place him, but he's an older man that's coming through. It's probably within family, but he's an older gentleman that is like a really intense, like uh, very paternal in the way that he's kind of coming across. And he's very much so like an interesting, kind of strong, stoic, like he's having me acknowledge that people went to him because of his experience and his insight from his life. And he comes through with a lot of love, but when it comes to like the lovey, touchy, feely thing, he's no. not focusing on that. He's no. gonna let people come to me because they know that I might not say a lot, but what I say is going to be true. Yes. Like very, very, very like yes. independent guy, like uh, very strong. Yes, very strong, very, very strong. strong. But at the same time, he acknowledges. Survived this, the depression. Right. He's actually, no, he's having me talk about his chest. Oh my issues. God. There, you're dead on. Yeah. You're dead on again. I know. It's you're, like you're, I'm, a you're, medium. You're, <laughs> I'm starting to believe. <laughs> I believe. Good. This is good. Okay, because I'm definitely referencing to the two. Who would this be? My late uncle Teddy. Nice. And he died of lung cancer. You said something in the oh, chest. The lungs. Yeah, Hello. That's right. You wow. said something in the chest. Right. And the way this comes through, he's very happy from his perspective of the duration of life that he Oh, lived. hell yeah. He, from his perspective, had a couple things going on. He referenced the heart thing, but he also is referencing the lungs, and it was a dual issue. Heart attack, lung, yeah. lung cancer. So he Hello. Had, yeah, both. So he's very much aware of that, um, and he's content with the time in which he passed. Uncle Teddy rolled his own cigarettes, <laughs> worked in the coal mines. Right was non-demonstrative whatsoever. I mean, there was never huggy-huggy, kissy-kissy with Aunt Jean. Right. He loved me as a child. My mother used to send me up there for summers. Right. And he used to say, we're gonna go a-hunting. <laughs> but it was, right. it was a wonderful time in my life. And these belonged to him. Wow. And I, I Wow. What does he want me to know? Please know he's around. He's acknowledging the wedding, the that wedding, was, the that wedding. That was just last year, he died. Oh my gosh, wow. Because he's, he's He's having me acknowledge your fiance. This is interesting the way this is coming through. He feels like he'll be remembered at the wedding, but he's having me acknowledge this feeling of like getting on a fishing boat and fishing for him. He's showing me a fishing trip. He's showing me, he's showing me you, and then your fiance, we're on a boat. But I feel like the way this comes through, it's like we're fishing, but we're thinking of him. And he knows that this is something that when we do this together, that he would have that. It's almost like we take a moment to say, oh, 
Yeah, he's with us, but I, he's acknowledging that. I can't believe it. Because he was my favorite uncle. He was just my favorite uncle. I'm getting hives from all this. It's like it's a lot. Yeah. I know. It's, you know, he just, even when we would go fishing and hunting, mm -hmm. he, there was, silence was so golden right. because he didn't speak much. Right. And I know that, that Rocky oh, would have adored him. Absolutely. And because he, he took care of his woman and Rocky takes care of me. Yes. He does. <laughs> That's insane. Yeah. My unresolved business that has been resolved today was about my uncle Teddy and the fact that he would have really appreciated Rocky, that, that he approves of, of, of this union. That, that, that brings me great joy. If I could hold on to an object, maybe? Sure, I, I have this penny. Okay, I've had a lot of interesting objects in my day. and First time I've ever had a penny. I like that. I love it. I have something in mind. I also have something very specific in mind. It's very fresh. So I'm curious to see if he's gonna pick up on this. And if he does, I'm just gonna a brick. It's funny that I'm holding a penny. Um, and interesting because one of the ways that he's tried to connect to people is like through finding pennies in weird places. Mm. And there is also reference to, I'm seeing a bunch of butterflies and a reference to a butterfly connection that he would have personally in his memory. But it's weird. There's some significance with this, with the butterflies yeah, the, yeah. and the memory thing. Who would, was the penny connected to? Um, to Stephen. My ex. Okay. He collected coins, and after he passed, I spoke with somebody else that was the clairvoyant, and they had oh. said, he's telling you to find a penny right. and, a, and, a, and a butterfly. Hmm. I don't really know how to quite deliver this. He's referencing to the fact that he feels like his passing could have been avoided. What did he technically pass away of? He was, you know, alcoholic. Like, he's acknowledging, bring up the second one, bring up the second one, bring up the second one. Who would be the second one that would have had the drinking issue? Me. Okay. I used with him. We were, you know, sure. addicts together. Right. But I'm the one that stayed clean and sure. turned my life around. Right. And he didn't. And so yeah. I feel like guilt around that. Sure. Stephen was, you know, very funny and he had this great big personality, but was very self destructive. And we just couldn't, we, we didn't make it work. We weren't meant to be together. And that's sad because he's, he's gone and that, you know, the disease took him. He's referencing to the fact that he's not blaming anybody for his passing. Mm -hmm. I just need that to be known. This, literally, the symbols that are coming through is in referencing to marriage uh -huh. and apology. And both are kind of coming through. Yes. Why would he be apologizing for that? Well, we were engaged. Yeah. We were engaged. Yeah. But we weren't right for each other. It's too bad. Yeah. It really is. He feels an immense amount of relief. And, good. and that's good to know. I think I'm still grieving sure it. absolutely and i'm sure you weren't ever completely able to fully grieve um, on some level like someone you love sure just you know right he gave up i feel bad to be mad sure no and i get that absolutely. i don't know how to process it i don't sure. know what to do with those feelings i always tell people like readings aren't a cure for grief right they, they might help right. but ultimately that's an energy that you can channel in and do something with yeah he is with you every step of the way and all the amazing things that you're going to do do right. them as though he's still here do right. them because he didn't have the chance to, but you do. And that's big for him, and that's big for all of the people who come through. They don't have the chance to, to speak out or tell his story about what he went through. He's not able to do that, but you are. And that's something that for him would make a difference. And that would keep his memory alive in a big way, and his influence alive. That's nice. That's good. Yeah. It's a good thing to take away. Definitely. That's a nice nice thing to say. Yeah. Yeah. <sighs> Poor thing. That was really, really sweet. That's what I needed to hear. Because when we were together and we had drinking and doing drugs together, that was our time then. And years and years, you know, two decades passed. And I'm a much different person now. I have to be a little more forgiving of myself. I feel like I have to kind of Go a certain direction. Um, I think I'll hold on to an object. Is yeah, yeah, good? great. Okay. Hello. Hello, everyone. Isn't it beautiful? I've held a lot of objects in my time, and this is definitely this is unique. That's actually someone who's not passed. Okay, so I'll just kind of see what we can do. We'll go from there. Let me see what this is. Just emphasizing, it's weird, I heard quality over quantity. 
And then they are having to bring up like medical procedures that I have to talk about. But then they're putting a pause on this. And for some reason, like they're not having me acknowledge getting this done. They're just having me acknowledge like waiting. Okay. Obviously, if we have to, we have to yeah. get it done. This but... person's going through a lot of struggle. Right. So that everything you're saying makes t total sense to me. They're just emphasizing this quality over quantity thing. And then they're having me talk about two things. Um, one, they're bringing me to this area. And they're bringing me to the head for some reason. Yeah, that both makes sense. The thing is, this individual is going to deal with difficulty eating, difficulty swallowing, difficulty breathing, because I'm also going to like lung and they're having me talk about this system. I want to make sure this person's getting full nutrients. They're having me talk about a liquid diet. And I need you to know that when this person passes, they're not going to go alone. Someone will be able to be there and take this person and, and that this will happen peacefully. But this person's watched over. This person's not alone, so. The best thing that can be done with this, I think, is focusing on the quality of life, so. That's important. Thank you. That, that was obviously the, someone I love dearly, so thank you. Of course. And thank you to whoever's watching yeah. over them. Of course. Sometimes those on the other side are just as aware of the stuff that's going on in the here and the now, and yeah. that can be helpful too. So 100%. Very around. helpful.